everyone, thank you again for joining us for another episode of the Liverpool Connection podcast. This is Pub Chat. We're again in Jono's garage after we just watched the uh, the second leg of the of the um, Europa tie against uh, Sparta Prague. 11-1 on aggregate, or 11-2 11 11 on, on aggregate, John. Give them the credit, man. Yeah, sorry. They got an own goal. 11-2 <laughs> on aggregate. And, you know, doing the business the first leg, that always helps coming back home. You know, we thought we were going to rest some players. The lineup was, was a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be. Salah starting, Zalba Sly starting, you know, Endo starting. Um... What were your initial thoughts on the lineup when, when you saw it? Yeah, the same as I think most people. I thought it was way stronger than I was expecting. Um, <laughs> uh, Robertson as well. Um, but Klopp kind of has a habit of doing this, you know, um, when you don't expect it. He kind of, I said to you before, I think he has a habit of doing the opposite too sometimes where you think he'll go much stronger and then he plays a bunch of kids against Everton or something. But, um, yeah, definitely a very strong lineup and um, one that makes you just that little bit nervous. But I guess he, he has his reasons, the fitness, and that maybe he wants to get in players. Um, that's all I can assume is that's what he wants to do. He wants to get minutes in and some guys likes that need it. You know, you know, we saw Nunez also started. Yeah. You know, with... Uh, <laughs> with Gapko and Salo. So, I mean, for any team, that's probably a pretty good starting lineup, but against a team that's, uh, you know, coming in, um, trying to chase the game and chase the tie, you know, it was always going to be like that. But, you know, it, it was uh, even Steven for six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then just, then all hell broke loose. I mean, we just started scoring goals and just quality finish in Nunez, quality finish, you know, Salah. And, and a lot of that is because of the the defensive work we're doing, you know, on our press. We're winning that ball up high, and by the time the other team even realizes that we're in the shooting position again, and, you know, just the, the finishing today in the first half is pretty spot on. Yeah, I mean, just watching it back, that first six, I didn't realize it was six minutes till we scored, six and a half, I think, before we scored a goal, and because when you watch it back, you're like, well, it was actually pretty even again, just like the start of the last game for six and a half minutes. And then, and then it, because it seemed like it went so fast. I think we were all so relaxed about the game. We were watching it down at BD Riley's that we barely kind of noticed the first few minutes. I mean, we were watching, but it was kind of like, ah, the ball was back and forth. And then suddenly six and a half minutes, the press just destroyed that team. And it was only, I think, from six and a half to 13 and a half were the four goals. It was fucking, it was unreal. Um, we just, and so many guys were just initiating that. Sal, uh, Bobby Clark, I mean, scores a goal and creates the, uh, the one for Sal. Uh, Nunez is just like everywhere too. He's coming back, winning balls all over the place. It was just, again, this, I think a little, well, a lot of it is this team that we played, Sparta Prague, they, they're they clearly used to being on the front foot and just going for it. And uh, it's just a wrong matchup against us because, you know, they, they, they're dangerous in moments, but it just kills them when we're be able to be clinical and just press them at the back and they had no hope. Their keeper was losing his mind in the first few minutes. You know, we're talking about the uh, just the, the effort that the this Liverpool team, and, and you can just see it's a collective energy, right? Because Bobby Clark, he comes in there, and it's seamless. He comes in there, and he's winning balls up high on the pitch. He, he, like you said, he scored his goal, his first senior goal for the team, so yeah. kudos to him. You know, and, and so he, good to see. Yeah, it's, it's so good to see these young guys. You know, they're coming in, not just playing the, the minutes at the end of the game, but they're starting games, they're scoring goals, getting assists. I mean, he could have had a couple of other goals. The one yeah. that he drove in and strung the palms of the keeper. Um, that keeper was shell shocked, <laughs> Yeah, but he did, and he but he, and he still made a couple of no, saves. Or, that were for the rest of the game, right? he settled down and he had a couple of good saves. Yeah, but you know, we talked about just um, the effort of the team. You and I were commenting the one time. I mean, we're up by 
9-1, 9-2 on aggregate. And you see Nunez running from yeah. the striker position all the way down to, um, you know, left back. And, yeah, left and, back and position. Yeah. Yeah. And even the announcers said, hey, yeah. that's your that's your number nine doing right. that. But that's the effort that Nunez gets. And I think that's why he's so beloved by the fan base, by Klopp, that no matter if he's scoring or not, he's putting forth um, the effort every single time he plays. Oh, yeah. There was, I mean, there were so many other moments beside the the goals. I mean, there's obviously the one that <laughs> some some idiot will put on a you know a clip saying how he missed the easiest one. But I mean, there's the ball over the top to the left where he just hooks it over to Salah. That we're all begging in the pub for him to just Salah to one time volley it because it would have been just a gl most glorious goal. But the man of tracking back and defending he did was phenomenal. His passing in was phenomenal three balls he was he was he's in such great form right now and it's just such just i'm just praying for man united for him to just kill them you know we're, we're talking about like the passing and again endo started the game and i, I thought he would get a break today you know, yeah Mac, Mac had a break but some of the passing that endo though you keep reminding me of people that started the game yeah. that i didn't think would start the game that's right so but you know, and those, some of those passes that he was making through the lines, you know, and and I know a lot of people in their head think he's just a, a defensive dude. He's a, he's a destroyer there. But, man, his passing through the line and some of the angles that he's making those passes, it's just he's getting more and more comfortable every single game. You yeah. could tell that the, the players around him are more comfortable with him because we had talked about this uh, while watching the game that I referenced when uh, Taki was on the team. And it took Taki a long time, and I don't know if it, it, he actually ever got the confidence of the team that he would get the ball in, in tight spaces when he needed the ball. And, but I think now that, you know, they look for Endo in the center of the pitch, and he's orchestrating it, and he's winning the ball back. But, you know, it's a collective effort. Bradley played again t today on the right-hand side. With, you know, let's not sugarcoat it. We're, we're looking towards Sunday. Right, the FA Cup tie with uh, with Manchester United. It's we can say what we want that the FA Cup is, you know, that's not a priority. But anytime you play Man United, you got to go into the game thinking it's a priority anyway. Oh, it's Man United. You, we have to beat them. We did. We had, we haven't had that many. We've had a few recently, but we haven't had that many great performances at Old Trafford. And when you're in a position when they are so, you know weak relatively and we're so strong relatively we we have to go and take those opportunities to just go hammer them get another 7-0 if we can but take whatever win we can we you know another chance that even if we win just 1-0 and knock them out of the cup it's a chance to gloat we have to do that but yeah I, what you said about endo i mean i feel like i was just thinking about it and it feels like Early on, when Maka came in and played that six, and he was just head on a swivel. He wasn't perfect, you know. A couple of times he got pressed and lost the ball, but he looked quickly pretty comfortable. Endo right now has gotten, I think, to a level maybe even above where Maka was when he was playing that six early on, in that. I mean, it's a little bit different competition tonight than I think yeah. reasonable Premier League side. So maybe it was a little more time on the ball because they were shell shocked. But he just looked like whenever he got the ball, no matter where he was, 360 degrees, he knew everywhere he could play that ball in the field, and he just he would just play whatever direction he needed to, and he had all the time in the world to do it. You know, well, he showed his medal against City anyway. So I mean, I, yeah. I don't think there's there any yeah. any. There's no more doubts about um, how valuable Endo is or his quality. I mean, he showed it time and time again. And, you know, just after the performance against City, I'm like, there, anybody that's doubting Endo's quality or whether he should be on the in the squad, you know. I think those doubts yeah. have gone. And, and the, like you said, the thing that has really shone with him recently is his, his passing, his through balls, his, his vision. Yeah. He, he is not just a... You know, <laughs> even though sometimes I think his body language kind of and the way he goes into a tackle makes people think he's just a, a physical guy. 
No, he's got, when he gets a, a second to look, he's got beautiful through ball. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're, this game um, really showcased Sobislai and, and Salah. They're coming back from injury. They got to play um, the whole game. Um, Robbo got to play the whole game in his preferred position of central, <laughs> center back. And I, as a fellow Sky, we're, I don't know if we've ever seen him there. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty interesting. And we were wondering, like, you know, Virgil starts warming up. And you think, okay, presumably Robo's coming off. That center back was just an intermediate step. Mm -hmm. But then Kwanzaa gets a yellow, and we're all wondering, you know, did um, did they suddenly change his mind, Klopp, when he was yelling at the ref that, you know, Pep's in the background going, ah, ah, you know, take Kwanzaa off? Who knows? But, um, you know, there was also that moment where he kind of slightly misjudged uh, a ball, and the defender almost got through. I swear he did that, Steve, just so he could, you know, run around the other side and nick the ball so that the, the Anfield would just start chanting his song. <laughs> what do you reckon? Yeah, that was a borderline uh, dog's uh, <laughs> red car there, in nah, my opinion. They, never, knew, knew they, they, they never showed it again. But, you know, it, it was interesting, right, to, for him to play center back. Because yeah. we all like, where, where is he going? So he got to play the full 90. So we're... we're as we're gearing up for the weekend, you know, you have Sobosla play the full 90, uh, Salah play the full 90, Robinson play the full 90. Guys that are just coming back from injury, they're getting their fitness, fitness levels back up. You got to rest a lot of pro players. Bradley played the full 90. So with this squad, I mean, you don't know what the lineup will be on, on Sunday versus Man United. But I'll, before we get to that, I just wanted to say, you know, we got uh, Wusilewski got the to get his first uh, appearance on the senior team, so good for him. The Polish Messi got to play, and um, he didn't look out of place either. No, he looked he looked fine, and I think it's one of those things that Klopp, in these moments, is trying to get as many guys as he can. You know, just that first experience. He'll put a new. I think he puts a new guy on the bench, even if like there was another guy tonight that I wasn't sure his name on the bench. The may not come on but he wants to give them that little bit of experience on the bench just to just to gradually introduce them so i mean that's just another way that Klopp is genius about bringing through guys you know and giving them the experiences um so that they're not overawed when it happens and none of them look overawed you know um mcconnell gets a good chunk of minutes tonight you know obviously we thought we talked about clark has looked comfortable for a long time now relatively long time. Uh, Bradley looks totally, you know, better than he was, again, outstanding tonight. Uh, and McConnell just, you know, came in and didn't do anything special, but just looked very comfortable again against decent, you know, players. You know, you know one time when they, they showed a picture of the sideline, um, players warming up, you had Dan's. Right, right. You had Kumas. Kumas. And then you had Kate Gordon. Yeah, I don't think anybody can actually legally buy a beer, <laughs> but it was just like, but that's well, at Liverpool we can. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. We hey, when we go to Liverpool, we don't buy beers; they buy beers for us, right, John? Let's <laughs> talk to you all our fans out there. When we go to Liverpool, we're expecting free points, <laughs> but it just shows you that, and all of them have you know contributed this year or have been um, an important part. But that just. As we go into the business end, you know, this is the last game before the international break. We have a lot of players that are at our disposal. And by the end of the international break, you know, we'll have a clear picture of Jota and, and Jones and Graven Birch and, and Trent. And Trent as well. So, um, oh, and the goalie, the best goalie in the world. And Allison. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if you, you look at who didn't play today, who played? Yeah. You, you can't see Salah not playing against Man United. I mean, if we if we go over the lineup on what we think will be the starting lineup, you have to think it's Diaz, Nunez, and Salah up top. Absolutely. Um, Mac, uh, Endo, and Sobislai. Yep. Bradley. Right? Or would it be Gomez on the right? We were talking. I think there's a reasonable chance that on the left. I think it's I think it's Bradley. On the right, I think you the the one fact X factor we've got right now in the defense, and it's a good one, is Gomez. And I think if you look at the City game, 
he really looked more comfortable on the right than the left um, in his minutes. I wouldn't say that Robertson, even tonight, it was on his like best form. Um, so I think you've got three guys that play fullback right now. Uh, Bradley Gomez and, and mostly play fullback. Bradley Gomez and uh, Robertson. And I, I think it's just a bit of a wash between yeah. who you pick for what position. Well, you know, it, and it's, I kind of look at it, it's very interesting because you could have Gomez, he, he started on the left against right. City, right? So he could obviously start on the left again. Um, he played center back today. I don't, but Kwanzaa started against Man City as center back. So I, and he came off early today. So I, I don't think that Klopp will have any problem playing him nope. in the in the in this uh if if Kanati is not hundred percent, yeah, and then yeah. nobody has any qualms about Kwanzaa playing. Yeah, I can't I can't see Kanate getting a lot of minutes if he didn't play. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to risk him. Right. So it's that right right back. So if if he wanted to play Robo again or even start Simicus, then he can put Gomez on the right if needed and Kwanzaa and Van Dyke. I mean that Right now, we have a lot of options. I think that's the only tough thing to call against United is like who plays those fullback positions. But it's a good, like I say, it's a good thing. I, I have no doubt in any of those three guys, Gomez, Bradley, or Robertson, uh, right now to play those positions. And I think they're all good choices. And it may be a bit more about matchups and what you think United will do. Um, I, I think Klopp's going to go real aggressive against them and want to just batter them <laughs> so I could see it being Bradley and Robertson more so because he thinks we don't need defense against this this team Van Dyke and Kwanzaa can shut these guys down but I mean yeah you know and they're at home and then it's a FA Cup so I don't I can't see them just bunkering in and playing for extra time no one wants to play extra time at this point in the season so we are through to the next round uh, the final eight and the draw is going to be here in about seven hours. Who do you want? I mean, we saw Leverkusen score two in the in injury time to keep their unbeaten streak. What out of the eight teams that, that we know that are going through, who would you want to get right now? Yeah, we were looking at the names in the pub. or we, They only had the, the symbols up there. <laughs> and I was trying to remember who was who. I know Marseille was in there. Um, I certainly don't want Leverkusen. I, I Honestly, I... I know a lot of people are thinking, "Oh, it'd be great to face them in the final," but I don't want to. I don't want to get beat by them, so, which, you know, we shouldn't. But they they have some mojo going right now too. Um, so let somebody else take care of them, and yeah, hey, maybe they have a glorious run in the semi final, and then go out before playing us. That'd be fine. Um, let's see who we got. We got Marseille, who I think wouldn't be a bad one. It's not a far away trip. Um, West Ham. I do. I just hate playing other English teams in Europe. Um, even though you know we should be clearly good enough to beat West Ham, I just feel like the games aren't as good um, against English teams. So I'd rather avoid West Ham. Do you remember the other teams? Uh, yeah, Dortmund. I mean, that could be kind of. I feel like they're not on amazing form, and you know. It would be kind of a club thing, so it could be kind of fun, uh, atmosphere-wise and things like that. But honestly, it doesn't really matter too much who it is, I feel like. Um, it's not Rangers, that's for sure. <laughs> who beat them? It was uh, Benfica? I'd take, yeah. I'd take Benfica. Um, actually, that that probably be my pick. I, I'd play them. Rangers almost, almost squeaked through against them, so uh, you know, if it wasn't for, I think they got a red card, Benfica. I might be mixing that up, but anyway, I, it doesn't matter too much. I think, um, you know, I think we'll be able to handle it with our squad. Um, there aren't, you know, teams that should stress us too much. Um, and we have a, we're going to have guys coming back, and we're going to need to keep guys playing minutes in case we need them. Uh, we're going to need that. We were talking about after the international break, there are big guys like Trent Gravenberg. Um, Jones, they're going to need minutes. And so they're all brilliant players. 
Yeah, I think that'll be the the hard part juggling the minutes when all those players get back because the the young kids have proven that they should be playing, and it'd be it's it's harsh on them for say Bradley not to play as much because Trent's back. Say Elliot, right? I mean, he'll likely still get minutes in almost every game, I think, but. It'd be nice for him to get some starts too, while while the Premier League is still going on. If sub, let's say subs like Mc, McAllister and Ando are, you know, our main Premier League starting three for most games, uh, you still want to keep, you know, guys like Elliot getting not just ten minutes. You want them to get a start and play sixty. You know, that's that's where the fitness is comes from. And then if you need them in a final or a last game of the season because somebody suddenly gets injured, then they're fit, they're ready. They're not just, you know, used to playing 10 minutes. Yeah, I think uh, Elliot's fitness levels are off the charts right now. We've, we've commented yeah. on that in previous uh, episodes that it seems like he could just play him and Endo seem they could play every minute of every game. I mean, just... Elliot just, again, he's in such good nick and good form right now. Um, it's just... I feel like every time you mention a player, I just remember, oh, that guy's awesome. <laughs> they all are awesome. You know, Gapco today, finally, you know, he, he gets to score a couple of goals, and he could have scored probably two more, and he was so pissed that he missed a couple of those at the end. But um, it was good to see him score again because we will need him. I mean, he he is the the alternate up there on the on the front line. Exactly. We, so, we don't know when Jota's going to come back. Um, and when he does come back, he's not going to be like immediately fit. And um, so Gakpo is our fourth guy right now up there. And I loved what I saw out of him in terms of attitude, in terms of physicality and movement. That movement for his goal, it, it, for his uh, first goal, is phenomenal. You know, uh, when Salah plays that ball, he's still behind the defender. He And Salah takes a chance that he'll get in front of his guy. And it's it's beautiful. So, you know, I know he was kind of mad that he really wanted the hat trick probably, but I thought he really played well. His shots were largely on goal, except for one bad one. But I thought the biggest thing I liked was he was using his body and fighting. You know, he looked like he was fired up and fighting. And I, I like to see that out of him. Well, this team has goals from all over the pitch. So um, any team that's going to try to defend us, you know, they don't know where the goal is going to come from. I think Salah enjoys his playmaker role too. He was, yeah. he, you know, he. I think he gets more pissed when the pass that he makes and they don't convert versus him missing a shot. I think he, he should have should have first time that one to Robo. <laughs> well, if you shoot like Robo, probably <laughs> that's better than he was can. waiting. Is there anyone else I can square it to? <laughs> okay. Well, that's why Robo plays center back and not forward. <laughs> I didn't see him play forward today. No, but, no, but let's see. It'll be a game one day. Him and Gomez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Put him up front. Okay. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to the Sunday. You know, it's St. Patty's Day. Yes. It's going to be a match. Put your green on too early, man. Oh, I have more green <laughs> than this. Trust me. We'll be down at uh, BD Raleigh's doing some uh, videos. It'll be a madhouse. It will be fun. You know, no, no makes allowed, but uh, I can't wait, man. It, you know, that's always a highlight. So, St. Patty's Day, FA Cup, Man United, the trifecta, and it's going to be a fun day. And and then we have a, a footy game at two o'clock, so that should be fun too. Well, <laughs> it's supposed to, it's supposed to rain for the next from about tonight till uh, I think Saturday night. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if that gets rained out our game, but. Um, Alex and Zach and I were kind of like fingers crossed at the pub, but um, the thing about the United game is everything looks so good right now for us and so bad for them, and that I'm a little just uh, just back of the mind. It kind of says a little bit. That's usually when something goes wrong, so um, I hate to be a little bit down, but I mean it, this is a perfectly set up for us to just. Batter those mank idiots. So, prediction score for United. Six nil. <laughs> I was gonna say four nil. And I thought that you were gonna make make fun of me for being, <laughs> but six nil. I like it. 
If it's six nil, man, <laughs> I'm skipping our footy game. Well, last time we had a footy game, we um, it was after the Carabao Cup, and we we <laughs> went and played footy. And that was not a good sight. We won though. We did. Okay. Yeah, the other team was shit. So <laughs> they, they play like Man United. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Subscribe, like, put on your notifications, and we uh, um, see you on Sunday after the match against United. And um, until then, up the Reds. Cheers. Up the Reds.